What's up, DevHeads? Long time no see. Now, it's been a minute, but today I'm back with something a little different. We're diving into the world of VR, specifically the PSVR 2 with the PC adapter. Now, full disclosure, I'm a complete noob when it comes to PSVR 2. I haven't even bought the PS5 yet, but my only experience with this bad boy is the PC. And yeah, I'm part of the PC master race. <laughs> So this review is coming from someone who's deeply entrenched in the world of PC gaming. So why did I decide to pick up the PSVR 2? I've been eyeing it for a while, mainly because I was really curious about those OLED lenses everyone's been talking about. I currently own a Meta 3 and before that, I had the Meta Quest 2. So naturally, my impressions are going to be influenced by that experience. I was especially interested in seeing how the PSVR 2 stacks up against the Meta Quest 3 in terms of visual and overall experience on the PC. Let me start off with a little story. Getting my hands on the PSVR PC adapter was an adventure within itself and I was starting to lose hope. But then I decided to check GameStop and even though the button said sold out, I clicked on it anyways, more out of desperation than anything else. Miraculously, the purchase went through and I managed to snag one. Talk about lucky. But as much as I'd love to do an unboxing for you all, that's just not my style. I like to get straight to the point. So let's dive right into the setup and my initial impressions. First thing first, setting up the PC adapter. To my surprise, it requires about three cables to get everything up and running. A USB to the PC, a display port cable to your video card, which by the way, isn't included. So be sure to grab it beforehand and a power cable to turn on the adapter. Compared to the Meta Quest 3, this felt a little bit of a throwback. So many cables. The controllers were probably dead straight out of the box, so I had to charge them up for a bit before diving in. Once I had everything plugged in, I headed over to the Steam and installed the PSVR 2 app. From there, I followed the app's instructions. Feeling like a total noob as I navigated through the setup process, I followed the app's instructions. Seriously, who has time to read manuals these days? One important thing to note, your PC needs to have Bluetooth capabilities. If it doesn't, you'll need to get yourself a Bluetooth dongle. Pairing the controllers took a bit of a trial and error, but initially it got there. I have to say, I really like how the controllers wrap around your hands. It makes you feel like you're ready to step into the ring. After pairing, the software prompted me to update the controllers, which took about three minutes per controllers. Not too bad, but definitely a bit of a wait. Now, as someone who's new to the PSVR 2, I did struggle a bit with the headset at first. It took me a minute to figure out that you need to press a button to stretch it open. When I finally got it on, the rubber faceplate felt noticeably different compared to the cushion fit of the MetaQuest 3. It was a bit floppy, but I have to admit, it did a great job of blocking out the light, which made the experience more immersive. Another quick tip, if you want to check whether the controllers are on, just look for a small white light on the edge of the ring. It is a small indicator, but it's there. Now, as for the setup process, I ran into a small hiccup. The software wouldn't let me proceed when proceed, even though I had everything connected. After some fiddling around, I realized that simply wearing the headset and pressing the power button did the trick. Crisis resolved. I'm not a big fan mm -hmm. of wearing headphones while gaming, so I switched my audio source to my speakers and let the headset update. During the setup, you'll be asked whether you want to share data with Sony. I opt to help them out, so I selected full but the only other option is limited. The Sony is getting your info one way or another. Now let's talk about the next minor issue I encountered. When a dialogue popped up asking me to set SteamVR on the OpenXR runtime, I found myself a bit lost. The instructions weren't very clear and after clicking around in Steam with no success, I decided to launch Half-Life Alex out of desperation. That turned out to be the right move because as soon as I put the headset on, the instructions for setting up the play area finally appeared. One of the first thing I noticed was that PSVR 2 has a sweet spot on the lenses. You really have to adjust them just to see things clearly. This was a bit of an adjustment coming from the MetaQuest 3, which doesn't require this kind of fine tuning. On the plus side, once you get it right, the visuals are pretty stunning. Speaking of visuals, let's talk about the OLED lenses. The first thing that really blew me away was how deep the blacks are. It is incredibly immersive. In that regard, the PSVR 2 definitely has the edge over the Meta Quest 3. I started a new game to put it through the paces and during a bright white scene, I did notice a minor screen door effect. It's not something that will ruin your experience, but it's there if you're looking for it. The controllers on the other hand offer some really nice feedback. They respond to finger movements in a way that feels natural, like the Meta 3. But I did have some trouble with continuous movement initially. After some adjustment, I managed to get it working. And I have to say, the clarity of the visuals is impressive especially compared to the Meta Quest 3 slightly compressed USB visuals. But not everything was perfect. One thing that bugged me was the physics, especially the force when throwing objects. 
I felt like I had less power compared to the Meta Quest 3, which might be calibration issues. I'm hopeful that Sony will address this in future updates. Despite that, I had a lot of fun testing the controllers. I even rolled my handle on a window to see how steady the tracking was, and it felt great. The OLED blacks continue to impress, especially in darker scenes where the details really pop. The finger tracking was on point and I didn't have any complaints in that department. To mix things up, I decided to try out Gunman mod, going full John Wick mode. Unfortunately, I noticed a lack of feedback when shooting, which was a bit of a letdown. Hopefully, this is something that future updates will address, especially as more developers start to support PSVR 2. And that's pretty much the gist of my experience so far. Let's finish this up with some dubstep, because why not? Thanks for sticking around, and as always, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this.